right, we got Born Huddleston here this morning with us. Welcome to Talks with Tanya. Thank you. Good morning. One of these days I won't laugh at that, Talks with <laughs> Tanya. But. So tell me about yourself. Who is Born Huddleston? Who are you? Uh, I am a inmate here that just got here in January. Um, I spent several years out east at Snake River. Um, before that, I, uh, before that I, was, uh, I worked in security, and before that I worked in, uh, when I was out there in the real world, I worked in, a, I was in the military for several years. Yeah. Military for several years, so tell yeah. me about that. I, uh, let's see, I, I retired from the Marine Corps. Uh, I uh, spent time in the infantry, aviation and safety, and back to the infantry. Uh, I served in Desert Storm, Djibouti, Bangladesh, Iraq, and Afghanistan on multiple deployments. Well, first and foremost, thank you for your service. Thank you. Country. And the, one of the great things about um, OSP is, is coming from another institution is, is that uh, as a veteran, you, I, I've heard that a lot from a lot of the staff and AICs alike. They're, they're appreciative of, of, a, of a veteran service, which I didn't kind of hear that before in, in really? a, at another institution. Yeah, it was, it was a little bit different. Uh, uh, here, I know it's like a lot of the AICs are more openly uh, engaged about it because everybody has a brother or a sister or a parent or a best friend that served at one time or another. So it's a, it's a little bit different. I'm getting used to it, you know, <laughs> where veterans are more welcome here. Good. You know, yeah. More appreciated. Yes. As you should be. Yeah. So um, I understand that you're here for life. I am. So that had to be very overwhelming, coming to prison, knowing that you're, this was going to be your new reality for the rest of your life. Correct. Um, so tell me, when you first came here, uh, maybe what was your impression w when you understood you were going to come to prison for life and what you would tell other individuals who, unfortunately, that will be a sentence handed down to them. So um, I guess basically what, what did you think you had to do and how did, based on what people say as far as, you know, you got to come prove yourself, that kind of thing. And then how did you overcome that overwhelming, daunting feeling of this is going to be your new life to make this a successful and um, positive way to serve your, the rest of, however long we get on this earth. Right. That was a lot of questions Sorry. in one. Sorry. I'm, uh, yeah. Uh, when I came to prison and after receiving a life sentence, um, it was kind of twofold. Uh, I had seen the movies. I have a, a lot of friends and, fam and family members that have been incarcerated. And uh, my military background told me that, you know, when you get to prison, you adapt, you overcome, you improvise, you get into the, you get into the, the mix of things. And at the same time, you come to prison and it's the toss from level is through the roof. You know, and everybody's got to, everybody's, you, you think you got to find your place and you got to, you get, you think you have to prove yourself. And, uh, you, you know, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure everybody knows, like, you know, who you are. Well, technically, you, you don't. Mm -hmm. And if I were to tell somebody who's serving a life sentence, who just received a life sentence, I think I'd like to sit down with them and let them know, like, don't let the small things bother you. Because when I came to prison, knowing that I had a life sentence, I got into a good program, but the bad part was I let the small things bother me quite a bit. Uh, I would let them know, like, hey, uh, find things that you want to do. Find things that you enjoy to do. Don't lock yourself in a cell. You know, uh, the way I see it is, is we've already been incarcerated for life. And if you want to sit in yourself, you're adding another box inside that incarceration. Your incarceration is yourself on top of that incarceration. Get out. Get a job. Uh, find something you enjoy. Stay physically fit. Enjoy the fresh air. Look up at the sky. You know, just because we're doing life doesn't mean that you're you're not that person. You you are not your crime. You're you're still that person that your family loves, and uh, go out. You know, get that fresh air. Walk the track. Move around. Find a job you like. I think that's what I would tell them. And definitely stay away from the small things. So you seem to be um, on a pretty positive path. Um... What made you choose that? Was there a moment, a defining moment, that you're like, yeah, I'm going to walk um, this way instead? I did. Uh, at first, uh, when I came to prison, it was one of those things where you go out and you find your people, and you, you see where you're at within the prison, you know, within the overall community of the prison, 
And I think what it came down to was is uh, uh, seeing individuals that you became good friends with and they would leave and you were happy for them. And then within six to two, six months to 24 months, they're back in prison. And then somebody like myself who doesn't have that opportunity or may not have that opportunity to ever get out of prison, it's, it's kind of upsetting. So uh, I kind of see my path, especially being uh, older, I, I'd like to see the younger individuals that have that, that have a date and that are going to be getting out soon that, you know, that they, they kind of focus on, you know, walking, just walking a real good path. And then when they get out, stay out, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. So if I can help them in any way and they can come talk to me and if I can send them in a direction that they need to go in and, and you know, that will keep them from coming back from prison, I'd prefer to do that. And I think that's, and at the same time, that's positive for me. It's positive for them. You know, it gives me, uh, as one of the counselors said, it gives me a reason to get up in the morning. Okay. So who are the staff that have impacted your lives in po life in positive ways during your time here? Oh, um, so after spending several years uh, at an institution out east, coming here was, uh, was, a, was night and day. It was definitely night and day. Uh, as soon as I got here in this past January, um, Bun, CO Bun was uh, my tier officer. He, he came and found me and wanted to know if I was a jarhead. It turns out our boots have walked on the same sand in Kandahar, Afghanistan. Uh, as, uh, as I got around, I found other AICs that, that we, had, we had served on the same bases. It turns out there's a counselor that served on the same base as I did. There's the Veterans Club. And, uh, and uh, it, it was just one of those things where uh, it was, it, it was more open. We were able to discuss this. So from compared to there to here, we, these, are, these are conversations we wouldn't have. And then there was uh, Mr. Bernhardt, uh, he served, and there was multiple other staff that served. And there was the exchange of war stories between AICs and staff. Never in a million years would I have thought that would ever happen. You know? So that's, that's, that's a big thing that I'm still adjusting to. In a, uh, I do do enjoy, you know, and there's there's times where there there will be a circle of AICs and staff, and and some are veterans, some are not, and everybody's exchanging war stories or something that their father did or brother did, and you know we could all talk about it. Another thing that's unusual that I'm still adjusting to here, which is <laughs> I think is great. So, what are you most passionate about? Uh, staying fit. Okay. I enjoy staying fit. Um, I figure I got a lot of good years underneath my belt to go. Um, it uh, helps me sleep at night, keeps my stress levels low. Uh, if I get angry, I can go hit the weight pile and let it go there, and then uh, turn around and walk the track and enjoy the rest of my day, hang out with, the fr hang out with my friends. So. What would you see the, say the most difficult part of being incarcerated is? The distance from family. The, the distance from family, the, the times when you start thinking about the life that you used to have, the things that you used to do. Uh, once those things start going through your mind, you know, you start remembering like, oh, I really miss this, I really miss that. I miss him, I miss her, I miss my children, I miss my parents. Uh, there's always that possibility of death in the family and you not being able to be there because um, we're here. Mm -hmm. And those are, there's, there's times like that where it just becomes really difficult and then, of course, back to the small things again, there's always going to be the small things within the prison that are just going to irritate individuals. And um, I found myself now, uh, after several years of incarceration, to not let the small things get to me. So, What um, do you think that your biggest accomplishments are in your life? Uh, in my life? Uh, my service to country was, uh, I would have to say, is my best. Uh, being a father to my children, even though I've been incarcerated now for several years, they, uh, they'll they randomly send me photos of before my incarceration to remind you, hey, this is the guy that you are, not, you know, not the guy taking the pictures, you know, standing around <laughs> like this, you know, this is the guy, this is the guy who you are, and I'm, I'm st my, my children still tell me that I'm doing a good job as a father. I'm, I'm keeping that open line of communication. We're still working together. Uh, visits are, you know, that are important, but I, I'd have to say fatherhood first and then uh, my service to country second. So if you're comfortable saying, and if not, Travis can cut this, but tell me about your children. Tell me. You oh, have... I have a, 
I have three great children. My oldest one is uh, serving in the Marine Corps too. Okay. He's uh, he's got 14 years in as a as infantry. He's currently a an infantry a tactical a tactical infantry instructor in Hawaii right now. My daughter is 22. She is a nursing assistant in Klamath Falls, and my youngest is 18, and uh, he's uh, taking a break off from school and uh, going to college after that, and he lives in Klamath Falls. And uh, because of the pandemic, he decided to go with all the rest of his friends and just take a year off from college nice. because college is really weird right now, he was saying. Well, it so, sounds like you've done yeah. your job as a parent and raised some pretty amazing children, so congratulations. Yeah, not easy. <laughs> Any grandkids or anything yet? Yes, I have two grandkids, okay. two beautiful uh, uh, granddaughters, Zoe and Ellie. They're probably the most amazing <laughs> children ever. Uh, they're super smart. They're super fast. Uh, they drive my son crazy, which <laughs> makes me super happy. You know, I feel bad for my daughter-in-law because she's a really nice person, and my son was a pain in the butt growing up. <laughs> you know, so she, but she's having to suffer the repercussions. Yeah. The best part, though, is is uh, just speaking to him in the the video visits, we do video visits together, and um, that's why I've been able to keep up with stuff. I think we had spoke about Alexa earlier. Yes. You know, she, my granddaughter showed me how she could order ice cream and cookies on Alexa, <laughs> which in turn upset my daughter-in-law because it was adding on to the shopping list, uh, so. I have to agree, grandkids are the best. Yeah, they are. Um, so as we kind of close this uh, interview, um, and, you know, Oregon and the penitentiary specifically is going towards normalization, and that's what this, this forum is about, is focusing on the positives um, and making our community a cohesive and healthy environment. Uh, what, is, what does that mean to you? Um, how do we make our community in here? Or how are we making our community one community? Well, since arriving here in January and hearing how it was prior to January, uh, what I have learned is, is that uh, we're, we can now openly engage in conversation with staff. And before, uh, what I'm used to, it's not. You know, it's come out here, face the wall. You know, we're going to sit down at a desk and we're going to talk. And, but it's, it's not an A and B conversation. It's just an A conversation. Now we can openly engage in conversation. We could ask about things going on within the institution. Now, we, not, we may not always get the right answer, but at the same time, we're, we're, we're able to ask. And that alone helps out a lot. Um, the respect level is, is different here. I, I find that uh, there are a lot more staff are more respectful, and then the inmates are more respectful towards the staff. So it, there's more of a person-on-person a -person thing, a humanization thing. You, you feel more humanized. You can kind of say the things you want to say, and as long as you're being polite and respectful, you know, that, you know, you can get your opinion across where you couldn't do that before. And to me, that goes a long way. Just to let somebody know, like, hey, I'm having a bad day. I saw this on the news. You know, what do you think about it, you know? And, uh, you know, there's, there's always going to be things that upset people. But at the same time, just being able to, come, to converse, you know, from one person to another and for an inmate to talk to a staff or a staff to be able to talk to an inmate and just say, hey, what's going on? Are you doing okay? You know, is, is a big deal. And if we were out in the real world, our support system out there would do the same thing. They would, hey, are you doing okay? Hey, do you want to talk about this? Hey, can I talk to you about this? You know, so it's, it's now there's more of a, it, it's engaged. Or it's, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not all of them against all of us and all of us against all of them, you know. Uh, I see AICs that are being respectful to each other. I see AICs that are uh, engaging with each other respectfully, saying, you know, you know, I hope you're having a good day. Hey, have a good day. You know, and that's something you don't usually see too often. Depend depending on the setting, you wouldn't see it too often. So. Well, thank you for your time today and telling us your story. And it was wonderful meeting you for the yeah. first time. Thank you for inviting me on uh, Tanya Talks. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, thank you. Thank you.